this staircase is an Asian uh, craftsman style staircase out of rift white oak and the client wanted to have a newel post. This is a half newel post. I did six of them that were whole. They taper all four sides from seven inches at the bottom up to four and a half. So what I did is you, you make a pattern, you do a center line, because it's important to get this thing perfectly this way. It can't be this way or that way, because you're going to be making miters, and all this has got to line up. And the miters came out really good. I would just, I'll show you what I did on them, but I ended up with blanks that looked like this, that were basically seven and a half inches wide by 43 and a half inches long. Okay, remember I told you that that thing tapered all four sides. Okay, the, the, the degree was two degrees, so I set the blade at two degrees, beveled this, set the fence over, and beveled that. So you had like a parallelogram, two degrees here, two degrees this way. It looked like this, okay? That's a little bit of a dicey cut, though, to set the fence and do your second bevel, isn't it? No, I'll show you. That's okay. one reason why this is so good, Okay. because... All your, I'll, I'll show you, I'll set the fence up here, and that's one reason why I wanted to show people, because they look at it and say, that's dangerous. Well, it is dangerous if you don't do it the right way, because stuff can kick back. But this here is, 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 is pretty darn safe, okay. and it's, it's extremely accurate. So if you make this pattern accurate, then okay. So what, 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 what happens is that this top part is the pattern. It's a full-size pattern. Seven inches here, four and a half inches here. On the inside of this right here to here is 43, well, it's actually... Uh, 41 and 15 sixteenths, and then when you do the bevel, it brings it out to 43. So what I did is this was with white oak, it's going to get stained. I did some uh, uh, faulty birch because I like working with it, and it holds screws good, and it just it's, it's good for making jigs and templates. So this screws into the template, then you have a screw in the end here because this sits down like this onto the thread of the stairs up here. This gets covered by. They're not sure yet. Some maybe maybe some copper or maybe even some granite. They're not sure what they're going to do as far as capping. That's what you're going to end up with before you do miters. You have 26 pieces that look like that. If I'm going too fast, stop me. Uh, this piece is actually short, but what I'm going to do is show you. This screws on like so, and you got to make sure that this is centered. Uh, this is seven and a half. This is seven, so you'd have a quarter inch here and here, and then put a screw in. Uh, this is four and a half, seven and a half, you have an inch and a half here, inch and a half here. Don't, if you do any of this stuff, just make sure your templates are lined up right, so that then all your pieces end up being like, matching. They're not, something's not off. Now, this fence clamps onto here, and the reason why I bought these pieces is to show you, and then I can just, I'll put this back in the jig and show you. Remember this was a piece that was seven and a half by seven and a half, right? So you're you're cutting this piece off. So what I'm going to do is put this back in here and just show you how it, I'm doing a dry run. It's perfectly in line with this blade. Got it. So what you're doing is this is a pattern riding against this fence. It's called an overshot fence or a pattern fence. And what happens, it rides like this. And you, it's going to cut to what this pattern is. So the pattern better be right. So you just go on through like that. Now, what happens on that is when you go through, this piece is in here. Now, you notice that's not tight. I've got probably a quarter inch there. And you need to have enough room here so things don't get caught in there. What you can do is you can get a couple in there, stop your saw, and then just take these out. They don't ever kick back unless you cut too big a piece and it gets caught in here. But what you have to do if you're going to do cut off a big piece, you might have to take. A let's, say you had, let's say you had a, a really big pattern. You had some white. You could go on the bandsaw because remember this was sticking out here. You could just saw off this quickly. Yeah. So what happens if you make this pattern correctly? I made 26 pieces by going like this all the way through. Then coming around like this, going through. Okay. So then you've got 26 pieces that are that are tapered. Then you tell the blade to the angle. Now, just a second. This thing. 
and still, okay, what I need to do. And my saw tilts the opposite way. So, oh, so what, you need to move the fence to the other side? Yeah. What, so is this critical right here? <laughs> yeah, it is. It because, is because it's riding against that. Right. Okay. Uh, so what you do is you line it up this way. I feel like Van Whoops. Get it close. Might be bed might be embedded in there that you can't move it right now. Oh it's not. Yeah. It's going to taper at the same time. I just figured it just I don't know, I just felt more comfortable doing this way and mm -hmm. uh, But you know how us lazy kinda, lacy yeah. folk are, you know. Well no no I yeah, you just, just pretty much <laughs> the same thing doing the splines, right? Except you just adjust yeah. the fence. Right. Pretty cool. And the splines, I just took this off and adjusted it, had a sacrificial fence here. Ran, and ran them on that side. The blade this way and ran it right in here at the same degree that I had the blade set at. Right. So, uh, and on the splines, you, you want them to be not extremely tight, but not real loose, but you want a little bit of play in there. And then when you go ahead and do your. Uh, the one on top. 